Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section online on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Now, many of you follow me here online for boxing picks. Some of you follow me here online for my takes on some trials that have made the news, whether it's the um, Amanda Knox trial or the Oscar Pistorius trial or others, right? But let's talk about the economy for a second. I think it's very important for people to realize that many of the talking heads in media, uh, many of the pundits out there really don't know what they're talking about and are helping cultivate an atmosphere of misinformation that quite frankly is killing the middle class here in the United States. Now let me just put it this way and I'm a uh, economics major from Stanford University. I also have a law degree. Understand that programs that artificially lower interest rates, right, whether it's quantitative easing or any other program that artificially lowers interest rates, depresses savings, right? People save to get interest on the savings. So when you take away that interest or when you artificially depress it, then you're literally killing the mother's milk of capitalism which is savings. Understand it's when people save that they're able to afford bigger, more important purchases down the road. It's also when people save that banks are able to use those savings to lend to other members of society who have uses for the funds. Now, when you kill that economic ecosystem, when you create a disincentive for saving, either by artificially reducing interest rates or by watering down the value of the currency, debasing the currency, then you're literally preventing productive activity. You're literally hurting GDP. Now, politicians have a conflict of interest. On the one hand, they're hired by us, the voters, to help create conditions for a robust economy. But on the other hand, right, they want to get reelected. They want to stay in power. So they want to alter the economic cycle so that it's robust during their re-election campaign, right? That's not what we want. Artificially suppressing interest rates might help you in the short term if you're a debtor, but it hurts all of us in the long term because it drives down savings. Let me make another point on a different issue. Let's talk immigration. Full disclosure, I'm an immigrant, right? I'm someone who was born in Kingston, Jamaica. I've spent most of my life in the United States, but I'm an immigrant, right? Let me just say this. I believe right now xenophobia is sweeping through the United States. You know, you can't look left or right without someone trying to blame something on immigrants, right? It's people in power trying to blame people without power for their problems. Now, what I want you to do is to think about the items you use in your daily life. If you use an Apple iPhone, for example, understand that that iPhone was manufactured overseas. Now, isn't one of the problems that the United States is having right now the fact that when entrepreneurs want to find cheap labor, they have to go overseas? Is the United States better off 
paying dollars to overseas workers who are then going to spend that money in their local economies, right? If I, if I export dollars to, let's say, country X, and the worker who gets those dollars then spends them in country X, helping the local economy in country X, is that better for the United States of America? than to have that worker here in the United States spending money here in the United States. Now we know that American teenagers, and let's be real here, are not lining up, they're not, to pick lettuce. They simply are not. Aren't immigrants the group that come in that are willing to do jobs that Americans haven't been willing to do. If you're going to hit me with hypotheticals about, oh, Americans can pick lettuce, show me the examples. Do you know any American teenager out there picking lettuce for a living? Now, if an immigrant wants to come to the United States to pick lettuce, to raise capital, shouldn't we have an immigration policy? that allows that immigrant to do so. Lord knows, aren't you or don't you know people who eat lettuce? Isn't it hypocrisy to buy foods like lettuce but then to fight having people pick lettuce for a living? Right? Well, my point is this. We need to rethink immigration entirely. I'm one of those people who believes not just in amnesty, but in a long-term solution that allows more immigration. I'm for more open borders. I want people to come to the United States rather than have Apple farm out its manufacturing overseas to find a cheap labor source. I want immigrants to be able to come to the United States if they're willing to work for less, which has been the case historically, right? The folks picking lettuce are not making ten, twenty, thirty dollars an hour. They're not. Right? If immigrants are willing to work for less, I would argue that the United States is better off having them here in the United States and having American companies and entrepreneurs able to use them here in the United States, right? And to have them pay taxes here in the United States, then to ship that money overseas, where? When the worker gets paid for helping build an iPhone, that money ends up in that worker's community, not back here in the United States. In sum, if you're going to be anti-immigrant, then you cannot be using goods and services created by immigrants, right? The argument doesn't work. Let me point out, too, the American public has been misled to such an extent that right now with this status quo, with suppressed immigration, with immigrants being run, with E-Verify becoming widespread, with increased scrutiny where immigrants have to go underground and have to think twice before coming to the United States. In this status quo, the middle class is losing ground. Right? That's the status quo we're in. Shouldn't we be thinking about ways to change that? Are you happy with this status quo? Are you happy with buying things like an iPhone where you know you're sending money outside the country? Right? Or are you better off with the status quo where American businesses can actually have manufacturing here in America so that the money circulates back through the American ecosystem. 
think it through. Right? Let me also point out too. The minimum wage. Right? Do you believe that Apple is paying an American minimum wage to the people manufacturing their iPhones overseas? Isn't the minimum wage really one of the biggest job exporters that we could ever have created? Wouldn't more people be employed without a minimum wage? Where Apple was able to hire people here in the United States? And if Americans don't want those jobs, okay, fine. Shouldn't we allow immigrants to have those jobs? Because then, of course, wouldn't the money be cycled back into the American economy, raising your standard of living? Think about it. The next time you hear some xenophobic politician who's pulling strings to alter market cycles and who is voting on bills and taking steps and praising a Federal Reserve who is artificially suppressing interest rates and creating a false sea of liquidity. Think about that the next time that politician tries to scapegoat immigrants. Who's helping your standard of living more, that politician or free market economics? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.